Honorable Leader of Opposition Business. Good morning, Senators. And Madam President, I have difficulty speaking with this one, so permit me to remove it. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, good morning, Senators, again. And first, let me, Madam President, um, of course, thank our prayer warrior, he is left, who has always interceded on our behalf in this parliament. His proven prayers, I, I've, I've expressed thanks to him when I meet him on the street on Facebook, but also to this morning I wish to add my voice in thanking him for he has consistently interceded on our behalf in this parliament with much fervor that I appreciate a whole lot. Madam President, I listened to the presentation made by the leader of government business and of course I just need to add a few remarks that I think that is important. Um, but before doing so, Madam President, I'm also aware that a number of persons, while we have not had any deaths here in St. Lucia, have died in diaspora. And um, through social media, I am seeing faces that I once knew who have passed away. And I wish to, on behalf of St. Lucians that I know very well, and those and senators who are here, um, you know, convey my deepest condolences to the families of those persons who have passed in the diaspora as a result of COVID-19. In addition to that, Madam President, in St. Lucia, they've had a few deaths during COVID-19. Giant, um, a good friend of mine, senior person, you know, Madeleine's mom in, in, in Mark, um, and the usual attending to funeral and visiting persons that is no longer possible. So through this house, I would I wish to convey my deepest condolences to the families of those individuals who have lost, you know, Silver as well in, in, in Badney has lost his, his mom, and some of them have not buried their loved ones because they uh, are trying to reconcile the issue of how to deal with a small gathering and um, post family loved ones who are overseas and not able to return. I think a number of people are wrestling with the idea do they proceed with the funeral in such an environment, moving away from the usual custom. So certainly COVID-19 has exposed, Madam President, um, so much for us to consume. And it would be unfair, Madam President, while we approved certainly the, the, the state of emergency at the last sitting without much debate. Of course, I listened to a presentation made by the independent senators who described the nature of what was being conveyed, um, what rights was being given up. The opposition did approve and convey this without much deliberation. Of course, with so much trust and faith because we understand the situation we are in. But Madam President, as we move forward, as expressed, and I'm not an expert on COVID-19, I really depend on what the professionals are saying. I just need to, by way of maybe a simple review in terms of what has been our strength, what has been our, our weaknesses in the past few weeks, highlight, in my opinion, this for us to get an appreciation from the perspective of the opposition, how we view this extension of time, how, how our people who continue to speak with us how they view it. Madam President, in terms of strength, I must admit that we, as St. Lucians, recognize that we have local professionals who can stand with the people in times of difficulties. That certainly has been a strength COVID-19 has revealed. It also has highlighted, Madam President, our frontline medical professionals, doctors, nurses, and, and a group of individuals when I went to the Castries Health Center who said, that they are hardly ever mentioned, but they too are totally exposed at a pharmacist during COVID-19, administering um, medication for receiving from persons their, their uh, prescription. I think they ought to be mentioned in terms of persons who are the front line, including our police officers, our firemen. They all showed that they can stand and are willing to stand when the situation demands it. Madam President, I saw also the beauty of St. Lucian's when I 
went to the supermarket at 6 o'clock in the morning and at La Clary supermarket and I had to take, join the line by the La Clary playing field. And I was amazed that so many persons interpreted something and I, I asked myself at the time, why did, what did I hear to cause me to come to the supermarket so early? I could not remember exactly what it was. But the beauty of it for me was that so many St. Lucians had turned out mean that we all responded to something that we all understood. So there is something common about who speak to us and how we interpret information. St. Lucians that morning understood that food security was an issue and everybody rushed to the supermarket. And I saw that in a sense as something beautiful that we as St. Lucians understand some things in a common way. Madam President, St. Lucians tried to adhere to the medical advice which was given. Some, of, some persons, it took us time to adapt. And even when it was painful and uncomfortable, generally, in my opinion, St. Lucians responded generally well as it relates to observing the protocols. There were some um, sites showing things that were not consistent with what the protocol should have been. But in the main, Madam President, that having to be an immediate thing thrown at us as St. Lucians, I think that St. Lucians performed well in, spite, in, 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 in the situation, Madam President. Madam President, one of the a major strength that came out within the time, Madam President, is the manner in which we were able to move to OKEU. Of course, Madam President, that has been discussed in time past as a major challenge. But of course, we saw again the strength of our professionals being able to move to um, OKEU, the new hospital, with lightning, lightning speed, efficiency as, and they were praised, of course. And I recall, Madam President, in a previous sitting of the parliament, it was said that we would require the consultants from the Cayman Islands to assist in making the adjustment work. And of course, Madam President, that reinforced a position I've held all my life in the public service. Too often we look for professionals and consultants from abroad. Sometimes it's necessary. But I always believe, Madam President, as my grandmother would do when you're hungry, you always look into your own cupboard first to see what's there to prepare for meals before you run to the supermarket. Our local people demonstrated that we can do it when it's, it's, it's needed. And in the most difficult time, most difficult time in probably in recent history, when prior to this we were discussing of the difficulty and the moment task of moving to the OKEU, our local professionals alone, alone, move to the new hospital. A major achievement, a major strength, Madam President, they should be thanked. Madam President, I also want to recognize the staff, the NEMO staff, and those volunteers who participated in packaging foods. A major strength need to be, of course, in, a, in the case of a disaster, persons need to respond. It was good, Madam President, and I think they ought to be recognized, as well as the telethon, which, Madam President, I may want to speak with slightly, because I've been associated with the telethon for more than 15 years. At one time, Madam President, I was the oldest serving member on the NCF board, which is responsible to the, for the telethon. When I heard the telethon was coming on, I had my doubts about it based on some of the decisions we have had to take as it relates to the NCF in time past. It demonstrated that it was a success, relative success, although I think a lot more should come from our private sector in terms of what we're trying to achieve. But thanks to the amount that was given, I think we need to, to praise those I am not too sure, Madam President, and again, Madam, the, the leader of government business would wish to outline that the funds collected at the telethon, what exactly it was for. I heard it was for, um, it was mentioned that it was for PPE. Um, I, I heard it was for, um, at some point in time, post vulnerable persons. Um, another time, I, as, as it was not clear. I think we should be very clear as to why did we collect the funds, what it's supposed to go to. Is it for the food? Um, and let us remain true for this. Are we going to be giving the persons, the frontline workers, um, an allowance for the hard work? If that is it, then that should be explained. But I think um, 
listening and persons contributing um, what I heard, I think we need to be true to it. It's, it seemed to be a bit confusing and we should, we should clear that up. Um, Madam President, it was said that the opposition was somewhat supportive and I heard this statement. This statement was made in the lower house and of course in the brief remarks made by the leader of government business um, it was said that there was a level of cooperation between the, by the opposition and of course recognizing that it's another side of government. Madam President, I was, that, I was of that opinion until um, a talk show host um, was referred to as the bow time and had my name being mentioned on as it relates to dissemination and um, I was a bit concerned. But Madam President, I think as um, the opposition immediately when this was announced discontinued all activities within the community. We convened meetings, observing the protocols, discussing the situation in St. Lucia in, attempt, in an attempt for us to be able to make a contribution to the wider discussion. We believe that we were concerned about the, the lives of our families, the, the, the lives of the citizens of St. Lucia, even those in the diaspora. COVID-19 came at everybody with major concern. And as an opposition, we had a number of meetings with other professionals, medical professionals, discussing the issue of COVID-19. Senator Henry, yes, Madam may President. I remind you yes. of the matter that is for debate? Certainly. And please get back to that. Yes, Madam President. It's just a matter of hiding, highlighting some of the strengths as it relates to the period um, before the extension, Madam President. And I'm coming to the end of that. And of course, Madam President, again, the persons in the diaspora during that time of the, of the, the, the state of emergency remained in touch with St. Lucians through social media. And again, I want to highlight this as a strength of St. Lucia in the context of COVID-19 and the state of emergency. Madam President, however, I need to highlight some of our weaknesses. And permit me to do that, Madam President. Madam President, I think we, the government side, somewhat could do a lot better to switch off completely partisan politics at all levels, not just at the parliamentary level, but at the ground level as well, at the cabinet level, and at functionaries, Madam President, because there were times as the leader of opposition didn't have detailed information as to what was happening, notwithstanding he's a co-chair of NIMAC, he sat at the head table, and when we had meetings, we did not have pertinent information and we understood things come, we understood the actions of government like everybody else in the private sector and not as a partner of government as described by the, 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 the leader of government business. Madam President, I am not too sure about certain things in terms of what we have achieved. I've heard that we have now, we now have zero, um, everybody who has been tested positive are now, you know, negative. I welcome that information, but I, I'm asking the question in terms of a weakness, our capacity to test persons very quickly and the quantity was, we found ourselves wanting very early at COVID-19 and I'm not too sure to what extent, Madam President, that may have affected um, how effectively and confident we are about our situation in St. Lucia. Madam President, let me state at one of the NIMAC meetings which I attended, I did ask very early to, to the CMO, would, when we said we only had two cases in St. Lucia, I asked the question to her at the meeting in the presence of everyone, would she be surprised, Madam President, that there would be an occurrence of or spread of COVID-19 in any of the communities that's not associated with the two cases we had identified. And she, she admitted she would not be surprised. And then, Madam President, I felt my, in my own logical mind that whereas we had focused on two cases at the time, based on how porous our borders are and the fact that persons were coming in illegally into this country, coming from Martinique, maybe through Dominica or Waterview, I felt, based on the description of what COVID-19 is about, the fact person can be asymptomatic, and all, all of those jargons that I understand from a logical standpoint, we could have a spread 
of COVID-19. And lo and behold, Madam President, as I asked, we certainly heard of five cases that was not associated with the two cases that we had identified earlier on. Madam President, I understand the, the need for us to move on, but I think that certainly was a weakness that was highlighted. Madam President, I have not seen from the government a budget for COVID-19 response. I have not seen this. Um, the, I, I, as something, a pandemic and a response from government that is so significant, I thought by now, the, over one month, the government would have put together a document, a budget showing the cost of the response by the government so that taxpayers understand the, the, the situation of COVID-19. Um, Madam President, it's a, it's a pandemic. It's not a, a, a hurricane that probably I could wrap my mind around the figures a lot easier. But I think for every disaster, one would have expected that there would be a budget showing the um, cost. Certain, certainly, and this is a weakness in the response. Madam President, I also believe, you know, that there could have been a little more transparency. Madam President, it was sad for us to have discovered in social media that the government was actually paying for the accommodation for persons in quarantine. Whereas at the NIMAC meeting, at the NIMAC meeting, that's what was said in social media. At, beg your, I'm speaking. Um, Madam President, that was said on social media. This is, we have not received any information from central government to say what it, what it was, but the, listening to what the Prime Minister said at NIMA preferred as to the um, accommodation for, 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 for persons in quarantine, I think the Prime Minister should provide clear information as to exactly what is the status of the relationship, because it, it was on social media that we paid $80,000 daily for the hotels. That was what St. Lucians are consuming as information. Madam President, a weakness was our, the inadequacy of our healthcare system. Clearly, and Madam President, I would not withhold but to remind, remind this, this House and your chambers through you, Madam President, that we'll, we spoke over and over and chastise the government on its posture as it relates to St. Jude Hospital, as it relates to priorities, Madam President, and COVID-19 exposed that to all of St. Lucians. And just like everybody, Madam President, who lined up on that morning by the supermarket going for food, everybody's of one mind where these issues are concerned because the nation believed that we did not do due diligence as it relates to St. Jude Hospital reconstruction. And the, the, the information given for us to spend over $100 million more when we could have completed the hospital certainly left us wanting. And at this time, Madam President, Sir a disaster... Henry, again, I remind you. Yes, Madam President. The substantive debate is the extension of the state of emergency. Thank you, Madam President. And this is why, Madam President, I'm highlighting the strength and weaknesses on the pre-extension, on the extension of the state of emergency, Madam President, related... Be, be careful that you do not offend the standing order 41-1, which speaks to tedious repetition and yes. arguments already made before. Madam President, I'm only making this argument now, but I'll move on, Madam President. Um, so, Madam President, I wish to state that resources used months before COVID-19, resources to, to do some projects that, Madam President, that were not necessary. The demolition of the La Clary housing scheme, five, half a million dollars, Madam President, was spent to do this by the government, and up to now we have no use for it. I'm asking, Madam President, based on the situation that we're in now, financially, our fiscal, our fiscal position, Madam President, with further extension of the state of emergency, these issues must be highlighted. 
Madam President, I know it's not comfortable for the other side to hear because as if it were Madam President, they would have preferred that we say nothing and just extend and move on. But isn't, a, isn't it a fact, Madam President, that we are today in a fiscal dilemma and Madam President, we spoke of how we proceeded with the expenditure of government on projects we were not priority. What was the priority of the demolition of the Leclerc buildings if we have not even started or we had no monies to do so? I guess you do not want to hear this. But let's leave this one alone, Madam President. Why spend a million dollars then to dem to, for an audit that we have no use for? I don't Senator think you... Henry, this is wittering. That's what it is. Yes, Madam so President. Please let us just get to the substance of the debate. Madam President, I will move on, Madam President, and um, certainly, Madam President, you may want to bear with me or may have to curtail my presentation because certainly, Madam President, I believe what I'm speaking is germane to the debate as it relates to the extension as it relates to the extension of the state of emergency for COVID-19. And Madam President, the issues that arose during the state of emergency ties directly to our fiscal situation. Madam President, what we could have done and what we could not have done tied directly, Madam President, with how we, we, we manage the resources weeks before the debates Tied in, Madam President, pronouncement was made, Madam President, that we had those vulnerabilities. We had those risks approaching. Oh, yes, shake your head and you disagree with me. But, Madam President, these things are, are important. Madam President, let me wrap up because I know that um, I don't want you to stop me from uh, asking to leader of government business. Yeah? On a point of order, Madam President. I do not see the relevance of, of all of this, Madam President, to, to, to the, the resolution at hand. We are talking about extending a state of emergency, Madam President, and I do not know that this has anything to do with finances. Honorable Leader of Opposition Business. Madam President, I understand where we are, and there's a time when we, as a country, we need to come together for the betterment of all. But it would be hypocritical, Madam President, and I'm going to support the move for the extension, but I cannot do without making those pronouncements, Madam President. We need to highlight where we are today, the decisions that were made. That, that is affecting us today. Madam President, as I understand it, we have no monies. And if, it's, if I'm supposed to be muzzled in this house not to say this, then tell me not to say it. But this is what I'm going to say, that we forewarned the government about the decisions that they were taking. The, the, the wastage of resources. Millions are being spent on St. Jude Hospital for no reason at all. That was said. And now, Madam President, we cannot pay salaries. We cannot, we could not have ordered kits to, for testing. Madam President, we could not have even fed our solutions. We could not have. Madam President, we, we purchased a few bags of food, but a lot more wanted, Madam President. And I, I wish to take our, our survey of living condition, where we have pretty close to about 40-something thousand people below the poverty line. And then, Madam President, we were in crisis where we need to feed people. And then, Madam President, if you take page 72, a document which has been made, a document of the House. Madam President, St. Lucia National Report of Living Conditions 2016. Take page 22. And then you see how many persons living, living below the poverty line. What is the poverty line? The poverty line is persons who are consuming food and non-food items at a total of approximately $17.65 per day. That's what it is. 
$123 per month. And of course, if you take the axis on this, there's also an index of deprivation, which means that 21% of those even below the poverty line are significantly deprived. And deprived of what? Take a look at the country's computers, laps, laptops, and, and telephones, and all of those things. We had the evidence. Couldn't that be consulted if we have a crisis and we're going to prepare food for persons and feed them? Couldn't that, have, couldn't that have informed us as to how many persons should be waiting? Madam President, I recognize the effort of those persons on the ground trying to put food together, but they were way inadequate. We spent, Madam President, I looked online and I saw the food baskets, and I asked, why is the government doing this? Couldn't they have consulted the opposition, Madam President? We have been feeding people through social, through our safety net program for years. Sir, Madam Sir, Henry, you stray from the substance of the debate. It is not a history. You, yeah. you are straying from the substance of the debate. Either you tie to it or please take a seat. Madam President, I am speaking with regards to what transpired during the period of during the period where we had an, um, when we had the state of emergency. This is what transpired, COVID-19. Madam President, during the state of emergency, we bought food for people. How did it work out? Is it not necessary to review this? Is it not necessary to review this? Madam President, I'm only reviewing what transpired with the powers of government under the state of emergency. Madam President, I know it would be preferred that I say nothing, and therefore I will just summarize by saying this. One, the government, in my opinion, Madam President, should find a way to complete immediately, immediately, St. Jude Hospital, because we're likely to have a second wave of COVID-19 by the professionals out there. And we could find ourselves wanting. Two, Madam President, we are approaching a crisis period when the hurricane season is upon us. And our vulnerability have been so exposed. And if we find ourselves compromised, I do not see how we would have survived in a Hurricane Maria environment. I'm asking that we consider those vulnerabilities. Madam, Madam Res President, as a consequence of the revenue problem, Madam President, I think a lot of ongoing projects that cannot be completed, automatically the contract would have been frustrated and legally they should look for rescission of contracts and move with things that are essential and that's a priority at this time. Madam President, during COVID-19 state of emergency, Madam President, I observe that there were ongoing drainage contracts going on. And I had to ask myself, Madam President, how much a priority were those contracts when we could not, at the end of COVID-19, we we're asking persons to take a, 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 a cut in salaries. I'm asking whether, whether this cut in salaries was to facilitate payment of contractors because I saw projects going on, construction of drains during the period. Am I not supposed to say what was going on? Madam President, I think we need to at this time, look at the issue of how do we, in a state of emergency, train our children. Madam President, mobile phones, smartphones, and laptops, some of those small devices, have a net, um, you could use it for a one-off situation, but for children to sit over long, for long periods using a smartphone at their homes can have some effect on their, 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 their eyesight, and, and we need to see doctors, some of them may, may require Thing. Madam, Madam President, we should look at the television which was started, the, the television program which was started by SSDF to bring greater equality of training persons, training our children, give them an opportunity to get their classes on television would also be very useful, Madam President. In that case, we would not, we, would, we could schedule all of the classes and have children exposed to receiving the classes in a more orderly manner without being strained on the ice, without the strain on the eyesight. Madam President, some communities where there are six children with just one mobile phone where the, 
the, the, the, the screen is all cracked up, Madam President. I am seeing these things. It does not augur well for our society. These are major weaknesses in our response, and we should think of those persons by taking them into consideration. Madam President, finally, last statement. Madam President, volunteerism is very important when it comes for disaster mitigation. Madam President, under the Nimon Act, it is expected that all communities have a disaster committee. These are volunteers. Madam President, from the time I entered the public service in 1991, I've heard the cry that volunteerism is dying. You do not get volunteerism again. It is not possible in a small island state and the nature of our communities to respond adequately when there's a disaster without supporting and encouraging volunteerism. Madam President, I listened to a member in the lower house said in the, when it came for the distribution of goods that it was the people on the ground who played politics and had their own agenda. And he didn't raise his hands and take responsibility. The member for Castro's office, he said it yesterday in the lower house. Madam President, this is unfortunate. The people on the ground beat UW or SLP, they were not playing politics. They were doing the bidding of politicians. And I think when on the ground things are not working, Madam President, we as persons who are leaders should take responsibility and not to throw our volunteers below the ground. I understand as a result a lot of them are not prepared to continue even after years of serving the, their communities as persons in that, in, that, in, that, in, that, in that sector of disaster mitigation. Madam President, these are my few words. I would have loved to say more, but I'm saddled in terms of God not to. I leave it, Madam President, for this side to respond as flippant as they want because they have the latitude to say whatever they want. I will restrict myself as you have so instructed. Thank you very much.